Hello all. So we will start with unit 3 and the topic what we will be discussing today is CNN design patterns. So far in the previous two units we have discussed the different strategies to structure deep neural network and also uh, tuning of hyperparameters we have done so that the performance of the network what we are designing is getting improved. We also talked about the main components of CNNs and the setting of hyperparameters such as the number of hidden layers, what should be the learning rate, what kind of optimizer do we need to select and so on and we also discussed the different techniques to improve the performance of the network such as regularization, augmentation, early stopping, dropout and so on. So in this third unit what we will see is all these elements will come together so that we will come up with an improved convolutional neural network that is we will be building a perfect convolutional neural network. So before moving on to the first topic of the session let us have a brief overview of the syllabus. This is the first part where we discuss different CNN architectures starting from Linet 5 till ResNet 5. Linet 5 was developed in 1998 and ResNet was developed in 2015. So we can see there is an increase in the advancement when we move on from one architecture to the other. In the second part we will discuss uh, what transfer learning generally is and how this transfer le learning can be used to solve the complex neural network problems and uh, the remaining we will have hands on sections. So before starting up with the CNN architecture let us quickly have a review of different design choices what we need to make so that we will have a clear idea of uh, CNN. The first pattern what we talk is feature extraction and classification. These are the two main components of CNN where in feature extraction we have series of convolutional layers and in classification we have series of fully connected layers. Coming to the second design choice what we need to consider is image depth increases and dimensions decrease. As we can see as we move from input to the output dimension is decreasing whereas the depth of the image is increasing that is the image is shrinking in its size and the third design choice what we need to consider is fully connected layers so we are all aware of what fully connected layers are we just have to do is pick a number of units per layer and apply that to all the fully connected layers so let us start with the first CNN architecture Linet 5 it was developed in 1998 by a scientist called as Likun and it is composed of five weight layers hence it is named as Linet 5 out of those five weight layers three are called as convolutional layers and two are fully connected layers we refer to these convolutional layers and fully connected layers as weight layers because they contain trainable weights whereas we have pooling layers also. Pooling layers cannot be considered as weight layers because they don't contain any weights. They are just used for spatial reduction. This is the architecture of Linet 5. Uh, we have, as I already told, it is composed of five weight layers. That is uh, three convolutional layers. You have C1, C3 and C5 represents convolutional layers and two pooling layers also called as subsampling. So we are performing here uh, average pooling as pooling is of two types average and max pooling. Linet 5 is making use of average pooling and you can see here after every convolutional layer you have tan h as the activation function. The scientist Likun has used this tan h as the activation function instead of ReLU. Because in 1998, uh, ReLU was not much popular in the context of deep learning. Hence, TanH was commonly used activation function in Linet 5 architecture. And this TanH activation function, you can call it to be as a zero centered activation function because we know that its value ranges between minus 1 and 1. So, uh, when we select zero centered activation function, it will help us to balance the network weight updation during the back propagation process and this will allow uh, faster convergence and as well as better optimization and we are making use of uh, 
as we are having three convolutional layers here c1 has six filters c3 has 16 filters and uh, c5 you can say it has 120 filters that is the number of uh, channels is increasing as we are moving from one layer to the another layer and what you notice here is all the convolutional layers will have the kernel size e as 5 by 5 this we need to remember and the point what you need to remember here is we are performing average pooling here instead of uh, max pooling in Linet 5 architecture. So these are the points what we need to remember. The activation function is stanhedge. Average pooling is used. Uh, each convolutional layer has 5 by 5 kernel size. And the first convolutional layer has 6 filters. Second has 16 and third convolutional layer has 120 filters. Coming to the uh, architecture, we have initially an image of 32 by 32 by 1, a grayscale image. This Linet 5 is widely used for handwritten digital uh, recognition system. This 32 by 32 by 1 is passed through convolutional layers and I told you that convolutional layer has a kernel size of 5 by 5. So, at the first convolutional layer, you have 32 minus 5 by 1 using the formula plus 1. This will be equal to 28. So, at the first convolutional layer, I have image size as reduced to 28 by 28 and 6 are the number of filters what you will be using at the first convolutional layer. And as I am using average pooling, 28 by 28 will get averaged and I will get the output as 14 by 14 by 6 the number of filters will remain the same here. Coming to the second convolutional layer this 14 by 14 by 6 is passed through the second convolutional layer so that I will get 14 minus 5 that is the number of filters what I am using is 5 by 5 in each convolutional layer 14 minus 5 by 1 stride size is 1 plus 1 this will come up to 10 so I have 10 by 10 by 16 what does this mean is I have 16 feature maps each of size 10 by 10 and these feature maps are being generated or extracted from the previous layer input image. So the implementation of Linet 5 in Keras we need to consider these four uh, key points. The first is how many filters in each convolutional layer and I told that we are having uh, 5 by 5 filter size and stride value is 1 in convolutional layer. Kernel size what you are using is 5 by 5. At first convolutional layer I have 6 filters. At second convolutional layer I have 16. And at the third convolutional layer I have 120 filters. And each of size 5 by 5. And the number of pooling layers and the type of activation function. These are the 4 main key points which are to be considered whenever we are implementing Linet 5 in Keras. So this is the pictorial representation of the Linet 5 architecture, the same what I have told in the previous one. And you can see here that the output here is flattened and I have 120 neurons in the first fully connected layer, 84 neurons in the next fully connected layer and at the output I have 10 neurons because I am using handwriting digital recognition system that is MNIST dataset uh, which will label the digits from 0 to 9, so total 10 classes, so at the output I will have 10 neurons. So this is the code for uh, building a Linet 5 architecture. So first uh, import sequential model. So this will stack the layers sequentially one after the other. And what are layers? I will be using convolutional layer, average pooling is performed, flattening converting uh, multi-dimensional to single dimension and uh, importing dense that is fully connected layers. Then I will uh, initialize an empty sequential layer where all the layers which we have imported here will be added one after the other sequentially. This is the first convolutional layer. You can see padding is equal to same which means that the output feature map will have the same dimension as the input that is 28 by 28 by 1. And at the pooling, I have padding as valid, which means that no padding, that is the output of the feature map will be smaller. And this is the second convolutional layer, pooling layer, third convolutional layer. 
and flattening it, converting it into multi-dimensional to single dimension, applying it to the fully connected layer. And you can see everywhere I'm making use of tan h activation function except that the output softmax is used and this will print the summary of the model what we have generated and this is the model summary what we will get and we we have already discussed about this type of model summary in the previous session this parameter represents the number of learnable parameters and uh, the formula for that is the width into height into number of input channels plus bias multiplied by number of filters. This is the formula to calculate these learnable parameters. So at the first convolutional layer the output shape is 28 by 28 by 6 and the number of learnable parameters here are 156. How did I get 156 here? The filter width and height is 5 by 5 and the number of input channels to this is uh, 32 by 32 by 1. So I have only one channel here. As I have one channel, only one bias will be applied plus the number of filters. So I am using six filters here. So I will add number of filters. This will turn up to 156. Now here, why did I have zero? Because I don't have any learnable parameters in the uh, pooling layer. Why? Because pooling layers will only reduce the spatial dimension. Coming to this part, 2416, the same calculations, the number of filter width and height 5 by 5 by 5 into how many filters are given as input here into 6 plus 1 bias this multiplied by the number of filters so the number of filters here is present filters is 16 similarly here 0 and similarly all these calculations are done here I will get uh, 10164 because the number of filters what I am applying here is 120 is given as input into 84 as the present channels plus 84 biases because I will have 84 neurons in this layer. This will turn up to 10164 and so on. So, so total parameters here are 61706. These are the parameters which are to be trained in our GleeNet5 architecture. So, setting up the learning hyperparameters, Lee Kun and his team used scheduled DK learning where the value of the learning rate was decreased using the following schedule. The first one was for the first two epochs, the learning rate used was 0 0.0005, for the next three, this much, and for the next four, this much, and 0 0.00001 thereafter. And we are making use of this function to tune the hyperparameters that is the learning rate as LR dot schedule. So you can see for the first two epochs I have it as 0 0.005 for the next three epochs it is 0 0.0002 and so on. This is the way how the learning rate that is the hyperparameters is tuned after every epoch. So the total number of epochs which was used in Linet 5 architecture in training was 20. So this is the end of today's session. In the next session, we will talk about the next CNN architecture that is AlexNet. Thank you all.